If I had it my way, 'cause you would know that you are. You're the coffee that I need in the morning. You're my sunshine in the rain when it's pouring. Won't you give yourself to me? Give it all. I just wanna see. I just wanna see how beautiful you are. You know that I see. Just checking into the hotel. Um, I'm in Italy. I'm in Rome for the next um, three days, inclusive of today. So we're going for an evening tour of Rome. So we have this little penny and with a earpiece, so that when she speaks, we can hear her. And I'm just like, it's hella touristy. <laughs> but yeah, love it for me. Anyway, I hope you guys are commenting, liking, telling me what I should have done, I didn't do, and what they were hoping not for, what they were hoping to see. Yeah. So basically, let's uh, take a walk around Rome. It's beautiful from what I've seen. Honestly, very, very beautiful. I love the architecture. I'm excited to see. So let's go. No, 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 no. Sorry, can you see? No, I can't. 
He worked as a bouncer in the nightclub in Argentina and even used to have a girlfriend, you know, so good for him. Yes. Love it for him. <laughs> <laughs> so every Sunday, the Pope at noon will face out from this uh, window, you see? Which the top floor, second window on the right with this curtain, okay? So they will, they will roll out, roll out the papal standard from the window. This right here. Oh. Whatever you're studying. This one. This one, you see this one, this one. From the window, he will face the crowds, okay, obviously beneath the bulletproof glass, and will start talking in the microphone every Sunday at noon. Okay, he will do his Angelus prayer. Angelus oh. prayer. You do not need a ticket, you do not need a ticket for this audience, okay? You will come into the piazza, okay? You will take a place here in the square, okay, or here nearby, even, okay? And, um, no ticket is required, you know, to assist the others. Mm -hmm. Every uh, yeah. We'll just imagine that this square will be filled with people. You know, the capacity of the square is 450,000. Mm -hmm. Okay, so just imagine how many people will come to see the Pope speak. Okay? This is Pope Francis on his Pope mobile, you know, so a very simple apartment, okay? So. And every morning to reach his office, that is in the Apostolic Palace, he will have to walk around the Basilica to reach it. Okay, so he doesn't live in the Apostolic Palace as his predecessor would do. You know, so it's a very live? simple pope. Where you know, does he live? Down in this um, Domus Santa Marta. Okay, so this is the building. Where is it? It's um, 
to the left from the column, you know? okay. so still on the territory of the Vatican, but it's just a very simple, simple premises, okay? No. This is how long this line is to get into the Vatican. The line goes round and round and full way for hours. For hours. Hours. The name Vatican is related to an ancient Etruscan hill, Ager Vaticanus, where first Etruscans and then Roman Avgors would do their vaticinaciones, okay, fortune telling, prophecies, so hence the name Vatican today, okay? In AD 67, here in the area was crucified upside down the first bishop, the first pope of Rome, Apostle Peter, okay? Allora, this happened basically over here, so we have this map, okay? So this uh, cigar-shaped thing, this is again the uh, circus, the circus of the Emperor Nero. And where you see the red dot, this is the spot where Apostle Peter in AD 67 was crucified upside down and he specifically asked it to be done upside down because he said, I do not deserve to die as Christ did, okay? So after that, after his execution, Apostle Peter, he was buried here in the area, okay? Where you see the basilica, where you see the dome, okay? So you see St. Peter's tomb over here in the map. St. Peter's tomb, okay? So he was buried here and the place immediately became the site of pilgrimage, okay? So pilgrims from all over the world would come here to worship the tomb of Apostle Peter, okay? So right here, have a look. <clears throat> In 326, Constantine the Great, the first Christian emperor, he built above the tomb of Apostle Peter, the first St. Peter's Basilica that had existed for almost 1,000 years. Old St. Peter's, so this is the basilica built right above the tomb of Apostle Peter in 326, okay, by Constantine, the first Christian emperor. In 1506, Pope Julius II, considering this basilica already outdated and old-fashioned, he commissioned its demolition, okay? Can you imagine? It took them 120 years to build this church that you see here, okay? In the meantime, 20 popes died and changed. 12 architects participated in the job. It was a never-ending project. So finally, in 1626, this new basilica was solemnly inaugurated, okay? The capacity of the present-day basilica is 65,000 people standing. Just imagine how many people can come uh, to assist at the ma uh, mass. The facade is crowned by the statues of Christ the Redeemer and the Apostles. You know, two of them are missing because they're here in the piazza. To the left, um, behind the screen over there, is Apostle Peter with the keys to paradise. To the right is Apostle Paul with the sword with which he had been beheaded. And saints with their attributes. Okay, And the colonnade is also like an embrace, an embrace of a Catholic church that invites inside the believers straight towards the tomb of Apostle Peter, which is located right beneath the dome. <laughs> The dome of the basilica that we call the dome of Michelangelo, okay? Because Michelangelo was the one who designed it, okay? So at the age of 74, the retired architect, he was literally begged, you know, um, <clears throat> by the Pope to finish this never ending. Okay, so behind colonnade, Italy begins again, okay? So the space in between two colonnades in the middle, it has this white line on the ground. So you can take a picture with one foot in Italy and another foot in the Vatican. Right? Yeah. <coughs> because on the ground there is a white line between two colonnades. Later you can check it out <laughs> if you want. So, guys, uh, the Vatican City State is a pretty young state, you know. It was formed on the 11th of February 1929 when Lateran Pacts, or Lateran Treaties were signed between Benito Mussolini, our dictator, and the church on behalf of Pope <clears throat> Pius XI, okay? 
So this is when Vatican got its independence, lost a lot of territories, but also gained an important, um, an impressive financial compensation, some 92 million dollars that would be billions today, so do not worry, they are doing okay. Besides, Vatican is also a paradise on earth. It's a tax-free place. So everything is 22% less expensive than in the rest of Italy, okay? So if you have the special pass to enter, <clears throat> the Vatican, you know, the actual Vatican City State, you know, we are not talking about tourists, you know. Then you can enjoy cheap fuel, products in the pharmacy, supermarket, outlet, you know, so everything is 22% less expensive than in the rest of Italy, okay? So, <clears throat> a paradise on earth. Okay? The new Pope, Gregory X, okay, just to speed up the process. <laughs> so, since that time, the tradition of conclave started. The word itself comes from a Latin expression, cum clavibus, meaning locked with the key. So this is where <clears throat> the cardinals are locked inside the Sistine Chapel until they reach the two-third majority of boats plus one and then the white smoke will be released, you know, into St. Peter's Square, okay? And it will be announced Abemus Papam, we have the new Pope. If not, the black smoke and then they keep on voting, you know. For example, Pope Francis, he was already elected on the second day, on the 13th of March 2013, okay? After his predecessor, Pope Benedict XVI, Pope Ratzinger from Germany, he willingly retired in 2013, you know. Inside the Sistine Chapel, so, this is the ceiling, created by Michelangelo, at the age of 13. Because this is the famous uh, Porta Santa, the holy door that stays closed for 25 years and it will be open only on the day of the, uh, only in the year of the Jubilee. Okay, the day of the Jubileum year, which is celebrated every 25 years. Okay, so the next one is already coming in 2025. Okay, so the Pope will kneel in prayer in front of this door. Then with the silver <coughs> hammer, you know, symbolically knock at it and then go through it, you know. So the door will be opened, the plaster will be removed, the bricks will be removed, you know. Then he will go through and then all the believers will go through this Porta Santa, which is to the right, you know, you see. They will go through the holy door to get the redemption of their sins, to get the forgiveness of their sins, okay? And it will stay open throughout the whole jubileum year. So the last official jubileum year was in the year 2000, arranged by Pope John Paul II. You remember Pope Vytila from Poland, okay? Uh, the next one was supposed to be in 2025, but our current Pope Francis, he just couldn't wait, you know, and in 2016, he organized an extraordinary jubilee year, um, <clears throat> the year of Misericordia. <clears throat> just imagine that through that door, that year, 2016, for the first time in history, two popes went through, because Pope Benedict was still alive, okay, so <laughs> Pope Francis, Pope Benedict XVI, and then 26 million believers went through that door to receive the forgiveness of their sins. The door to the very left, you know, to the very left-hand side, is the door of death, used for funeral processions to carry out dead bodies of popes and cardinals. The only original door is in the middle, okay, it will be used to get inside in the basilica, the door of Filaret, from the 15th century, okay, meaning that this was the door coming from the first St. Peter's Basilica, you remember, built by Constantine in the 4th century, which is no longer there, okay? <clears throat> has the real masterpiece by Michelangelo, the famous Pietà, lamentation over the dead body of Christ that Michelangelo sculpted from a single block of white Carrara marble at the age of 23, okay? This is also the only statue which is signed by Michelangelo because when he put it on display for the first time in 1499, it was created for a French cardinal, he decided to be present among the first visitors who came to admire it because he wanted to see their first and natural reaction, okay? So he decided to be present incognito, okay? The Sophagus of the most loved and most venerated Pope in history, okay? Pope John Paul II, Pope Vytila from Poland, okay? <clears throat> Guys, maybe uh, you remember uh, that on the 13th of May, 1981, there was this assassination attempt against the Pope's life 
here in St. Peter's Piazza while he was driving his Pope mobile. Okay, a Turkish terrorist, Ali Akjagbar. Ali Akjagbar. He shot in the Pope twice while he was driving his Pope mobile. Okay. After that, he was uh, immediately transported into the Gemelli Hospital in Rome where he was operated on. Okay. <clears throat> Fortunately, he survived. When they extracted the bullet from the Pope's body, he specifically asked him to be placed in the crown of the famous statue of Virgin Mary of Fatima in Portugal, because the assassination attempt happened on the day of the apparition of this Virgin Mary, you know, Virgin Mary of Fatima. And so this bullet is located there in this um, <clears throat> statue. So uh, Pope announced that I'm alive thanks to her, thanks to this Virgin, Virgin Mary, and he became especially <clears throat> devoted to this Virgin Mary. Look at this mosaic, the, the Carizzi, uh, the palace, you see, <coughs> Virgin Mary is right there as well. He did the canonization of Pope John Paul II, so basically proclaimed him a saint, okay? So a lot of people are usually in prayer in this chapel, you know? So <coughs> then uh, the thing that will attract, you know, all the visitors is, of course, the Baldacchino, which is located right beneath the dome of Michelangelo. The Baldacchino by Gian Lorenzo Bernini, that has the height of a seven-story building, okay? 29 meters, made out of 61,000 kilos of bronze that was looted by Pope Barberini from the portico of the ancient Pantheon, okay? So that's why the twisted columns are richly decorated with bumblebees, which is the heraldic symbol of the Pope. Okay? Beneath is located the high altar where only Pope Francis is allowed to do the Mass. Okay? And deep, deep down underground is the tomb of Apostle Peter, to whom the basilica is dedicated. Okay? So beneath the dome is the baldacchino, and beneath the baldacchino there is a high altar and deep, deep down underground is the tomb of Apostle Peter. Our Italian archaeologist Margherita Carducci, 1953, he, she carried out the works, you know, they opened the tomb, they analyzed the uh, remains there, you know, and they proved that the DNA that belonged to this kind of uh, male uh, living in the first century AD, okay? <clears throat> so the bronze chair, inside of which is located an even older wooden chair that belonged, according to the legend, to Apostle Peter himself, you know, so uh, they said that the Apostle Peter himself did the sermon, you know, from this wooden chair that is located inside. Of it. Up above the stained glass, you know, it depicts the Holy Spirit, the dove, you know, so uh, <clears throat> it's it's enormous. Okay, so you can see some letters above, you know, so when you enter the basilica around the perimeter, there will be an inscription in Latin and Greek. So guys, the height of every letter is two meters, okay, so seven feet, yes, it's, it's you can't feel it, you know. So, for example, here the chair is uh, decorated with the angels, you know, each angel is uh, two meters. There are four fathers of the church around this, the throne, okay? So each father of the church is 19 meters of height, so you just, you cannot feel it. Can
are gay. <laughs> oh, you've never seen me vlogging? <laughs> Even Pena, the first time she was just looking at me like I'm crazy. Anyway, we are finally at the airport uh, in Rome. And it's been a beautiful 10 days. Beautiful. Nothing short of beautiful. But yeah, I'm happy to come back home. I have missed my people. I have missed my country. But I have loved every single part of this journey. I will do, uh, we'll sit down and discuss what I loved, what I didn't like, and everything about my experience. But now, we're waiting for the others. So, us, we met people who were like, turn it, turn it, mall, turn it, turn it, turn it. We went. So, we went to a very far away mall. And by the time we were supposed to come, we're told the airport is just here. So, we're waiting for the rest of the other guys. It's really cold. I think. I don't understand why airports are cold, but anyway. So let's check in. Uh, catch you on that side, either Dubai or on the flight. Let's just see how it goes. I am thankful to God very, very much for everything. I'm a Tuchunga, I'm a Tuekapoa. We've had a good time, and I don't take it for granted. So let's head back home. We are finally checking out of the EU. Uh, mm? It's been real. I really pushed myself into these girls. Yeah, did you yeah. enjoy yourself? N no, yeah. not really. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, they, they gave me a hard time, you know. But I loved the company. Yay. It was so nice. Ah. <laughs> I best time ever. Oh, we are Happy. the best time. Jackie. Coming back, coming back, coming back, coming back to Italy. Yeah, we'll be back Italy to Italy for sure. We loved Italy the most. Yeah, you see us. Yes, yes, and they won't. Was it when you may be so to put it multiple entry? He's in go entry. No, 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 no. I'm not to go to South for Marina Moldness. South for Marina Halietu. Okay, uh, Kenya is a uh, money from a hustler, <laughs> and we have everything is about the hustle. Hustle top down. Now, come here, the gates are so far, the journey continues. So, let's go. Meet people of Kericho. Kericho, we yeah, are nice. Tell them, tell them to like, do tea, like the channel. Like the channel. Share. Share. Subscribe. We have tea. <laughs> tea. Tea. When you talk about tea, we just know one tea. The tea that comes after. Q R S S. Tea that comes after S. Please don't mind him. <laughs> don't mind him. No questions asked. Catch you later. All boarded now. Um, I really wanted an aisle seat, so I just put my legs like this and then I just chair doesn't have one. I'm crossing my fingers that nobody comes. So yes, all up for Emirates 41H. No, sorry, AK096 from Rome to Dubai. Crossing my fingers, I get this aisle seat without someone in the middle, so I can relax. But one day, one day, I'll be flying business class. One day. Until then, me and my aisle seat, if no one next to me, put this trip in my head. God, and we ask that you take us safely. He keeps us well. We pray for safe skies, we pray for the crew, we pray for everybody, nobody will get sick, everybody will be fine. We pray for the for the everybody to drive of this car. For the pilot and his uh, assistant. All will be well. We pray that um, we'll have a safe flight. God will protect us against safe people and we shall all go back home safe and sound. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
the same. And then Mr. Man, he got me flowers! And it was such a nice reunion. We are back. Let's go home. Let's go home. Yeah. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for your king over our lives, Father. Came back to you. Right for me, aunt. Aunt. Okay. Yeah. A. Uh -huh. And A. Uh -huh. And T. Uh, lowercase. Huh? Right, aunt. Lowercase. Lowercase. Yes, daddy. Okay. Uh, okay. Lowercase. A uh -huh. and N uh -huh. and T. Fantastic job. 